Hello guys and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be taking a look at a rugged smartphone that was sent to me by Yule Phone. This is the Armor 10 5G, which is apparently the world's first 5G rugged smartphone. For $399 on sale, which equates to about 530 Australian, is this worth the money? When it comes to rugged smartphones, you really don't have a lot of choice. So let's open up the box and see if it's any good. Looking at the box, there'll be no confusion about what type of phone this is. And inside the plastic sleeve is the chunky device. You've also got the SIM eject tool, a tempered glass screen protector, manuals, a USB-C cable, headphone dongle, and a 15 watt power brick. A travel adapter will be required as this is a foreign plug. And on the back, there are four camera lenses. More on that later in the video. And with the also satisfying peelies off of the screen, let's turn it on and begin using it. After powering up the device and doing the initial setup, we get our first look at the version of Android 10 that's installed on here. It didn't take long for me to set it up exactly the way I wanted it. Aesthetically, I think this is a very nice looking device. But is it worth the money though? Well, we've got quite a few aspects to examine. The build quality is truly excellent. The rubberized corners and back should definitely help it in the event of a drop. And I really love that there's a dedicated programmable key that you can set to turn on the flashlight, take a screenshot, or even open an application. The buttons all have a nice clicky feeling when pressed, and the machine surface makes them pretty obvious where they are without looking. It's also surprisingly heavy, and I thought my Oppo Find X2 Pro was heavy at 202 grams. But the Armor 10 weighs in at a whopping 333 grams, which is 0.7 pounds. It is definitely not a lightweight phone. The MediaTek Dimensity 800 and 8 gigabytes of RAM keeps this somewhat stock looking version of Android 10 running pretty smoothly. But will this get an upgrade to Android 11 that's already been released? Or any updates for that matter? Well, only time will tell. The included 15 watt charger got the battery from 25 to 80% in just over an hour. Now that's definitely not very fast, but considering the battery is 5800 milliamp hours, I guess that's to be expected. And the phone easily got me through a full day of intensive use. And the fact it included a charger is also pretty good. You can't take that for granted these days. So let's go out and take some photos. The cameras in this phone are definitely a mixed bag. The primary 64 megapixel f1.8 lens takes good photos in favorable lighting, but is definitely let down by the over sharpening in the images and the lack of any stabilization whatsoever. I must say the lens flares do look pretty nice and I'd happily take photos using this smartphone during the day. But the wide angle lens is absolutely garbage. For some reason you can't even enable HDR for the wide lens. In fact, HDR is for some reason a separate feature in the camera app. The lack of HDR means the poor dynamic range is even more pronounced. Highlights are often blown out and the image looks super soft. There is also no autofocus with the wide lens, meaning if the subject is too close, they'll simply be out of focus. The auto white balance in the exact same lighting conditions is also way off compared to the primary lens and sensor. How good does the night mode perform though? I compared this against my Oppo on a moonless, nearly pitch black night. And the results definitely speak for themselves. The Oppo is a clear winner in every single way. And these were both on tripods as well, so this is definitely a best case scenario. This is a quad camera setup though, right? Well, it technically is as there is a 5 megapixel macro lens and a 2 megapixel depth sensor. I imagine these are only here to make the spec sheet look more enticing. And the macro lens is horrible. But how does it fare when it comes to video? Using the rear camera, and I do mean rear camera, as only the primary lens can shoot video, does 4K at 30 frames per second. It appears to not have any stabilization at all, which means shooting handheld is going to be a shaky affair. Comparing this to my Oppo Find X2, you can see that optical image stabilization makes a huge difference. With both phones on a tripod shooting at the same 50 megabits per second, the Yule phone produces pretty good results. Honestly, you'd be hard pressed to tell them apart. In the spec sheet as well as the marketing, it was pretty vague about what type of panel this is. I can confirm that it is indeed an IPS panel, not an OLED. And at this price point, I think we're starting to expect OLEDs. The screen's also not very bright and very hard to see in direct sunlight. This is honestly a pretty big flaw for a phone that's supposed to be used outdoors and in rugged terrain. The promotional images also make the bezels look far thinner than they actually are. 
And even though the bezels are that thick, there is still a hole punch for the front facing camera. On the back there is a single rear firing speaker. It's definitely adequately loud and sounds pretty good for what it is. And when I was in a phone call, the other person said I sounded very clear and I was easily able to hear them as well. When it comes to performance, it's pretty fluid throughout normal operations. But when I tried to run the Geekbench 5 CPU benchmark, it would always crash straight after finishing. Perhaps this is because the phone isn't in their database yet. I did however run the 3 d Mark Wildlife graphical benchmark, comparing it against the iPhone 12 and my Oppo Find X2 Pro. The Mali G57 GPU in the Armor 10 fell way behind the other two phones. When it came to 3D gaming, I thought I would try PUBG Mobile. With the graphics set to HD and frame rate on high, it was very fluid and quite playable. Although I must admit, it was pretty hard to play using just a touchscreen. So, this is what we've all been waiting for. Just how durable is this rugged smartphone? To start things off, I thought I would try something pretty easy. Even with a lot of force, I wasn't able to bend this thick slab whatsoever. Structurally, this is a very sound phone. Trying to scratch the display glass with considerable pressure also had no effect. The same can be said about the glass covering the rear cameras. No marks left by my sharp knife. There were scratches left on the surrounding metal though. The rubber coating on the back was also pretty resistant to my knife, with the grooves mostly disappearing over time. The side rails and buttons are also made from metal, which appear silver underneath the grey coating. Our first big test involves putting the phone in a container with heaps of coins. This is designed to simulate years of rubbing against things in your pocket. I then proceeded to violently shake it for about a minute, and when I took it out it seemed to have typed in all of these numbers. I don't think that's a real phone number though. The metal side rails appear to have suffered some small chips, and the rubber on the back is a little bit scratched. This is only minor cosmetic damage though, and as for the glass, it is still absolutely spotless. But how does it handle being submerged in water? This should also be pretty easy as it's rated at IP69K for dust and water resistance. And after a few minutes I did notice a black substance seeping out of the edge of the display. This didn't seem to actually be a problem and after half an hour it was still on and running great. The speaker grill was clogged with water and all I had to do was blow it out though. Dropping the phone from over 6 feet on the corners and the back several times only caused very minor scrapes and dents. The rubber coating is definitely doing its job to protect it. But after several drops on the display glass, the protective edge around the screen was finally compromised. The glass is now cracked, but the digitizer still works fine and you could still use this phone with full functionality. The rear camera glass is still intact thankfully. I'd say it's definitely worth using the included screen protector. The bottom line is, if you want a big, heavy and extremely durable phone, this is a very compelling option. The battery life is also decent, but the mid-range specs, OK screen and pretty lackluster camera system do leave a lot to be desired. But if you want 5G, dual SIM support and expandable memory, I think this is definitely well worth the money. Thank you very much to your phone for sending this over, and if you liked the video feel free to leave a like, and if you want to see more, definitely consider subscribing. I'll see you in the next video.